What's up, fellas? What's going on? Chaos here, bringing you guys another video. Today, I'm bringing you guys a great salary cap gameplay out of the Friday Night Football from Mudhead against 5-2. I know you guys have told me that you guys struggle against heavy blitzers. People sending six and seven people at you crazy. And I'm going to show you guys how to attack it today. This is one of my best games against 5-2. It's against a player who's made a good run in the Mudhead League, in the, excuse me, in the Friday Night Football from Mudhead. So it's a really good game to get you guys because it's a guy that knows what he's doing. And it's one of the games where I really dot it up and I show you guys how to how to attack it. So make sure you guys stick around to the end. You guys are going to learn something from the beginning of this video to the very end. I can promise you guys that the ending is great. So make sure you guys stick around for that. If you guys are new, make sure you guys hit the like button for me and the subscribe button for me because that will show me some support and it will help you guys continue to not miss any of my videos so that you guys will continue to get better at the game. Also, if you guys are with me for a while, Hit the notification button for me. Make sure you guys never guys never miss out on a tip. Also, if you guys are just getting here, I just want to tell you guys I know I've been uploading a lot of gameplay lately. Don't worry, I have some stuff coming for you guys. Tips that help you get better in Madden in general that are really, really good. So stick around for those. And I I usually upload more tips than I have been lately, but it's just end of the year, so I'm really focusing on gameplay just because I feel like there's not a ton of things that you can really give out that people don't know already. So Make sure you guys keep that in mind as I continue to roll out gameplays and some tips in the future for how to get better at Madden going into Madden 20. So without further ado, let's jump into this game. All right, fellas. So you guys see in the top right corner, we're playing my guy BG. And you will see his team right there. He's got 99 Derrick Henry. That scared me right away. The second I saw that and I knew he was going to be a single back trio, I was like, all right, we're in for a ride this game, man. Uh, it's never fun playing these guys with 99 Derrick Henry, the best Fournette. Uh, the best mix in guys like that when you see it you just you get scared I, I, honestly and you guys see on his first possession here he's coming out in the single back trio that means you're gonna get a heavy dose of dive you're gonna get a heavy dose of pitch and then when they have to pass they have a couple good passes to go to the right away though when I when I'm see when I see a single back trio there's two plays that I really think about it's the play with the tight end on a post going across the middle and it's the play with the crosser going across the middle with the S post on the back side so those are really the two plays that I think about. There's a third one where the corner route is not bad, but those are the two that I really think about. And right there, you see the crosser. And I thought I had it pretty boxed. He ended up getting it, uh, getting open, getting a step. We were able to knock it out, but I really felt like we we had that box. I didn't think that, was, that should have gotten open. He just kind of got a burst at the end. But right there, we had him stop. We were about to force a fourth down and Derrick Henry doing Derrick Henry-like things. When you play, when you're in salary cap and you're playing these good running backs and you don't have great tackling safeties or linebackers, you're gonna struggle. And my team's really built for stopping bunch and trips tight end. I have Dion at safety. Um, I have I have just fast corners and fast safeties that can't necessarily tackle very well, but they can move around the field and guard routes. So right there, we cross manned it with Dion. I really did not think that was gonna get open. When you cross man a post like that, usually Dion will get it. Right there, I honestly wasn't too worried about that just because and I think in future times, if you do the exact same adjustment, I don't think it would work the same way. Sometimes in this game, it's not really consistent, so you'll do something that you think will work, and it doesn't work that time, but it might work the next time. So you just have to kind of be a judge of it. That's just really a judgment call by me to think, okay, if I cross man that again, I don't think it would get open, especially with a 99 speed Dion who has 90 man. So great methodical drive by him. We made him work, which is good. We got to see a couple of his pass plays. And we saw a lot of dive, but the fact of the matter is we made him work, which is perfect. So the, the more you make somebody work, the better your off you'll be when it comes to the next possession, the third possession, the fourth possession. Right there, I don't know why I lagged, but we get, we get a one-play touchdown, which is the exact opposite of what I was just talking about. He didn't get to see anything I had to do on offense. He really got to see one play against 5-2. That's it. So that's a perfect drive for me because I get seven without having to show him a single thing. So we tie it right back up, which is good. Pretty much of a demoralizer for him usually. So he goes back to his post with the corner route that I talked about. Nothing was really open and we forced a third down. We're really making him work. Every every play is a struggle for him, honestly. I felt like every set of downs we've gotten to a third or fourth. Um, and it's very rare that he's picked it up quickly. Right there, nice little dot, high ball's a hitch. He's never gonna drop that either, unfortunately. So moves the chain again, but just continue, continue, continue to make him work. Good tackle right there. Just give him small chunks, twos, threes, four yards, and eventually you hope at least that they will make a mistake. Right there, 
I probably could have got him for a two-yard loss or at least a one-yard loss, but I missed my tackle, unfortunately. But another third down. Just keep making them nervous. I'm telling you, if you guys make, if you make these guys work, eventually they will turn it over. And right there, huge play. We force a fourth and 14. This is now the biggest play of the game so far. If we get off the field, we're in prime position to win this game. Have to get off the field. And as you can see, he goes to bunch tight end. When he wants to pass, he goes... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, guys. Oh, man. That's whew, that's brutal. He picks up the first, but that's something I just noted right there. When he needs to pass, absolutely has to pass, he's going to go to bunch tight end. So just something else I was able to add to the toolbox of what I've learned from him. And as you can, guys can see, I have switched up to big nickel over G. 335 just wasn't getting it done to stop the run. And big nickel over G is still good against the pass. I have a team that can, that can play both 335 and uh, over G just because I have... The personnel to fit it so that's another adjustment i made i wasn't stopping the run good enough with the adjustments i had to do so i went to big nickel i think it was a good a good decision by me personally just because i couldn't really stop the run out of three through five when he does go when he does go to passing downs though i was going to three three five just because that's why i feel most comfortable stopping the passing but if i know he's got a chance to run the ball i'm going to be in big nickel the rest of the game and right there we get him to a fourth and one I probably could have blown up that dive, but I just missed the gap by a little bit. And he's going to end up uh, getting to the one-yard line for a first and goal. And that's just, a, that's just a rough possession, guys. We forced two fourth downs, one of which was a fourth and 14 where he just threw at everyone's neck. So, unfortunately, we turned the ball over. But back to playing against this 5-2. And this 5-2, it's so good against the run. It's so annoying. I just ran the ball there to get off the hash. And I can't even like I barely get back to the line of scrimmage, so it's just unfortunate. You don't, you can't really run the ball against it. And right here, this is probably one of my favorite dots that I had against it. So I tell you guys all the time, when you're playing against five two, you have to either send five out, which is what I'm doing right here, or you have to max protect. You got to mix it up, make them, make them think. And right there, I had my in route open, I just couldn't get the pass off. Fourth and six, big play here. And if I get stopped, then I'm in some really big trouble. But and he does that but what I was telling you guys was this if you're gonna send five out I don't know what just happened right there but I don't know forget that glitch he, he stopped me I don't know what happened with the game but um what I was saying was this so if you're gonna send five out they're gonna have to put extra people in coverage they will not continue to send seven at you I promise you that because if they do, they literally can't guard five people with four. It is literally impossible. No matter what they do, they can't do it. So when you make them send six at you, then you mix in the max pro. You can actually block it. And then you and then you pick them apart still because they're still only got five guys in coverage. But you have all day in the pocket because you're max protecting. I'm telling you guys, that is the best way to attack it. And it is going to work for me going into this next half. I promise you that. So 21-7. I'm in some trouble. I feel like I haven't even played that bad to make it 21-7, but there is no way I'm not fighting in this game because, number one, I've been playing great defense and I'm really making him work. I think I'm going to get some stops in the second half. Number two, he really only has one stop against me, and that stop was just kind of an unfortunate play where I couldn't get a pass off when my guy was wide open, and he screamed at me on fourth down. Now, I'm telling you guys right now, in the second half, you guys are going to see an absolute clinic on how to attack 5-2. Because there's nothing they can do when, they, when they're when they sending seven and you have five routes out there and then you force them to coverage out. Because 5-2, when you coverage people, it can't do anything because it's got five D linemen and two linebackers. What can you possibly do? Because it's no, you don't have the personnel to do anything like you do when out of a nickel 3-3-5 or a big nickel. You just don't have the speed You don't, and you're too enclosed. You don't have them spread out enough. So right there, probably a bad read, but it's all good. I'm telling you, that, that wasn't like a play where I really think they're going to pick it off very often. He made a good adjustment, but it's not going to happen all day. Right there, we hit our we hit our drag across the middle. One of our Max Pro plays, I'm telling you, I'm doing a good job of mixing up. Five out, Max Pro. Five out, Max Pro. Five out, Max Pro. He can't keep up with what he wants to do because if you call it wrong, then I, I can get a huge play. So right there, we go back to our Max Pro play. He misses the drag on the motion. It's really just trying to give him different looks. I've given him a drag with a corner route. I've given him a backside drag with a crosser. I've given him the double and sail. Now I'm dragging my tight end, sending him back the other way. There's just so many different things I can do that he is going to have to struggle to guard with only four to five people in coverage every single play with none of them being spread out. Continuing to dot him up, 
I actually have a touchdown. I just couldn't fit it in. I mean, I, I just couldn't see it till after the play. I literally, as I threw Y right there, I was like, oh, touchdown. Now, Y wasn't not open. It was. Like, I just, I just would have rather had a touchdown. But I, like I tell you guys before, that's in my back pocket now. I remember that. I told the stream, literally, I was streaming this game from my head. I told them that play, I said, I remember that. I will catch him lacking again. I promise you guys that right now. And you guys will see it later on. I will go to him. I'm, I'm going to say to him, I'm like, all right, he's going to do the exact same adjustment. And I'm going to get a touchdown. And I'll tell you guys when it happens because it was something that you guys really need to do. When you're looking at, when you're playing the game, you have to see the adjustments your opponent is making. If you're just going out there calling random plays, you're going to get stopped because you don't know what they're doing as we go to our favorite red zone play. Love that play, guys. I love that crosser play. People will hard flat a lot, and you can just really get a great ad catch animation with, with your best receiver. So back to Big Nickel over G to stop the run. Looked like we had a chance there to hit him in the backfield, but didn't get it done. But as I was saying to you, just please make sure when you're calling plays, look at what your opponent is doing so that you know what to do to attack them. If you're just calling random plays, you won't know what to do to attack them. Very important thing. Now, another play where we just felt like we had him stop, and Derrick Henry is just making countless plays for this man. It It's frustrating when you feel like you're actually playing pretty good run defense, and you're getting them for either like no gain, one, two yards, and they're ending up being seven yard plays, eight yard plays. And it was also frustrating because I felt like in his first drive, he broke some tackles, but he wasn't like killing me. Now I feel like Derrick Henry is literally like breaking every tackle, so it's just a little bit frustrating. However, we're going to continue to try to make plays here, grind it out. We played perfect defense. We were ready for that running back wheel. That running back wheel play was something he went to earlier when he needed a pass play out of his trio, and that time we were all over it. And next play here, he's going to a uh, bunch tight end. I told you guys when he wanted to pass, he was going to bunch tight end, so I was ready for it, and we pick him off. Great defense right there, and now he's starting to sweat. He was up 21-7, but now we're starting to really, really, really make him work. And right there... We caught him again. I said, I said in the stream, I said, I just picked him off. He's mad. He's going to get super aggressive. He got super aggressive. He, he soft squatted his outside uh, cloud. And I sent my streak deep and we bombed him over the top. I knew that was coming again because I didn't think, he didn't know that I saw that he struck, uh, he did that last time that I had the streak naked for a touchdown. He didn't know that I saw that. So when I saw it, I was like, okay, I'm going to get him again. And right there, we did exactly that. We make a heck of a play, and now we're up 24-21 after being down 21-7. We're making a great run here. We need one more stop. If we get one more stop, this game is literally over with, done. And we got him on a third and 10 situation. He's sweating here. Get him to a fourth and three. When you come back like this, the person really starts to get nervous. So I regret actually not sending more pressure at him when I had the opportunity because, like I said, when someone is down like, it was up like that, and then they lose their lead and they completely like just loot like choke it away almost they're going to be nervous on their next play you want to make them have pressure and have to make quick reads so i actually regret not sending pressure especially on that fourth down i feel like we would have got a turnover but just got to keep it trucking keep it moving man and make sure we try to get off the field now so he's back to the bunch tight end and now that he got that first down like i told you guys he was a little bit nervous when he got that first down he loosened up he's like you know I know, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. When you're playing the weekend league games and you're playing a salary cap game, playing whatever, playing a money game, you're in a sweaty situation. You're like, man, dude, this guy's killing me right now. You get that first down, you're like, whew, breath of fresh air. Like, oh my goodness, it's about freaking time. <laughs> so right there, he highballs his post. Really should have been a pick, man. Like, I can't believe it. And I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what happened right here. The screen literally got cut off. But you can see he gets his flat. I don't know what happened with that. I just want to apologize, guys. Uh, Sony Vegas being super weird, but we were on it. And right there, he goes for it all in another possible pick, man. We hold him to three, so we don't lose. But I felt like we had the game-winning pick two or three times right there, boys. But we let him tie it up now. I have three timeouts. This is a sticky situation. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's a very sticky situation. I, technically, with 18 seconds and three timeouts, you can 100% get three. So it's rough because it's like, ah, I want to try to get my field goal, but you don't want to turn it over because if you turn it over, then you lose. And it's just a weird, like it's a weird spot. And right there, he mans up my corner out. It looked like it burned it to me. I'll let you guys be the judge. Maybe I had to wait on it. I don't know. But we throw a pick, man. And you know what's coming next. He highballs it. 
and he gets himself a field goal. We're going to lose off that, boys. I feel like we played a perfect offensive game up until that point. Or not perfect, but pretty close to it against 5-2 where you kind of have to think and sweat the whole time. But we don't get the win, unfortunately. I hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry about the little bit of glitches that happened with the editing. Uh, not sure what happened there, but oh, I hope you guys enjoyed. That's a rough one, man. Take it easy. Drop a like for me. I love y'all. Take it easy. Peace.